It is my desire to switch to DaVinci Resolve from Premiere Pro, but they are not making it easy. You black magic with your voodoo. Let's just assume most of this is user error. This video is more of a cry for help. Just let's assume that I'm doing things wrong and all the things I'm about to complain about can be done in DaVinci and you will tell me how. But if not, DaVinci has some very major flaws. Nobody's talking about these flaws. Premiere Pro costs $66 Canadian a month if I want to use all the suites, Audition and Photoshop and Premiere Pro. That's like $8,000 a year. Nope, 10 years. Still, 8,000? What if I make videos for another 40 years? That's $191 million. Whereas Blackmagic's a one-time thing. 350, you're done. And most of it you can do in the free. Can't edit 10 glorious bits in the free version. That's why I bought it. So let's get on to all the things that suck in DaVinci and hopefully I'm wrong. Or you are. Black magic. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. All right, so I got a little sample clip shot on the GoPro in both programs. We got them both up here. And first thing I will say is the timeline performance is so much better in Premiere Pro, it's not even funny. But I will say this, right now I'm using the free version. And I've heard some rumors that you can't do GPU acceleration in the free version. I don't know. Things should be running but they do not. The thing that irritates me the most is when I want to make these key edits right at the beginning of speech here. It's not smooth and I can't hear it. I can't hear the exact, as I go frame by frame in Premiere, I can hear everything. You zoom in on Premiere. I know we're good to go, I can make a cut in Premiere. Everything's so accurate though. You can see it so well and you can hear it as you're editing. It's just the performance, it takes a while for what I hear to catch up with what should already be there. And then it just makes my cutting job so much harder. Like that just skipped so much. It paused and then jumped on me. That should be a cut right there. It's just, it's so much extra time. So I just noticed I can play a 4K file in full resolution in Premiere Pro, but in DaVinci, even a 2.7K file, I gotta cut it down to a quarter resolution. If then, if I'm lucky, it doesn't even play. And all these proxy modes, you can generate optimized media in DaVinci, but that takes like half an hour sometimes. When I get a video done, I throw it all on my timeline. I wanna edit it right away, it's fresh in the mind. And then I gotta sit back and let it render. Oh my God. And does that even save when I wanna close the program and open it later? It doesn't. You can see in this, proxy mode, off. Oh, I wasn't even on. Does it not go on every time? <laughs> God damn. Is this any better? No, see the skippiness? I've just noticed the speech does not line up with where my cursor is in DaVinci. I can be scrolling through the edit and then I chop it there and then I play it and it cut off a little bit of what I said. I'm like, no, it's, it doesn't work. Another thing I love about Premiere Pro is that I can change the size of these windows if I want. If I want to scroll up and get a bigger timeline or I'm color grading, I want to make this bigger. Like look how big I can make my screen here. In DaVinci, it's this tiny thing. Wow, that's pretty big. Oh boy, I'm debunking myself pretty hard here. This is embarrassing. Oh boy. They put that in a patch or something? They still put in the color one where it's most important. I have to take the clips off. No, nope, that's not it. Clips. Oh, it was already off. Can I make that bigger? I can't. That's as big as the color grading screen gets. Look how big that is. And why does it look different? It's the same shot. So that's bullshit. My next complaint is the audio editing is so much harder in DaVinci Resolve. I can do it, I've, I'll show you my workaround, but in Premiere Pro, I press one, it starts opening it up in Audition. A couple seconds later, we're good. I got a couple of things that I do. One press switches, it copies the right to the left. So I only use the front facing mic on the GoPro. Then I do my equalization. I got my GoPro 3 setting here. I'll share that in a future video. If you want to copy my settings, that just gets rid of some wind noise and traffic noise. 
So I do this to the GoPro, and then I have this whole series of events. Click remover, de-esser, noise reduction, normalizing, compression, like everything. So I just, I wanna show my speech and get that, even that does not look great to me. And, but I can see it. It's like, okay, I would probably wanna cut that at minus four, so I got a little thing here, boom. Minus four, and then renormalize to minus two, and there, I'm good. I save that, and then my Premiere, we're all good to go. Now I got good audio. And there's this homeless guy. Don't worry about the homeless guy, you're homeless. In DaVinci, should I want to accomplish the same task, I go into Fairlight, we zoom in on it. Now what I've had to do is set up a whole bunch of shit over here, but I have to manually do this. There's no numbers telling me what's peaking, what decibel am I at? So I just, I have to like, okay, once we get to the top, we're clipping. And then I have compression over here. I did all this shit, I got a limiter. I don't know that what all these graphs mean, but I somewhat got it. When we go here, like picture you're me. And you I'm can see that it's reducing it a little bit, just the tiny tops and it's compressing everything. It works, it's just not as fine tuning as I like. It's not as accurate. And there's a huge flaw with this. We'll talk about later when we talk about switching timelines because this setting does not save and we just talked about it. There's no need to mention it again. I debunked myself again. Another thing that pisses me off is the timeline scrubbing, it snaps too damn far. Just let me show you. In Premiere Pro, say I duplicate this. We got two clips and I'm going in here. I just wanna trim a little bit. I can trim that, that little bit. It's like, yeah, we snap. We snap here, but look how much. I can still go frame by frame. Okay, I'll take that, cut it that out. In Da Vinci, dare we dream of doing that? It's like, okay, we snap. Look how far it jumps. That's like 15 frames if it was a foot. You gotta zoom right in there. You gotta zoom right on. I'm blowing this out of proportion, but I've noticed in Premiere, I don't have to zoom in as much for this snap feature to not snap so damn far. I'll snap your head off. Let me just remind you, I'm not a fanboy of either. I'm looking for the best program, and if I mention something that, like, you can, you've already found a workaround, please let me know down below to make my life easier and to help all of us learn from my stupidity, please. But for one example, here's the next one. If I want to make a little fade, let's do it on both. We got a fade here and I decide, oh, this clip should have been cut a bit. I can still cut it, and it doesn't delete the fade. That's nice. On DaVinci, if we fade that bitch, and I've said, oh no, not here, fade it here. Gone, I gotta fade again. What the hell is your problem, Black? Along those same lines, if I just wanna make a cut, I don't have to select this clip. I got Q, which deletes everything back to where it started. We're good to go. Why did my audio disappear? You're a piece of shit. So that's how I edit for speed. If I go here, like, okay, I'm gonna make a split there. And then this is where I start talking again. Okay, boom, split there. Bam, delete. It's like, it's very fast. Where is in DaVinci? I swear to God. I press Q here. Oh, it worked. Why the fuck? <laughs> it's working. How am I debunking myself so hard? No, okay, there. See, when this clip is selected, let me see if they, it splits without selecting. Yeah, it does. So you can't select anything. We're learning here today. But if I select this, then this one won't cut. It'll split, but not cut. So you can't have anything selected. And that's stupid. You're gonna have something if you touch it. But that's interesting. Now you. You can actually do that. Interesting. We, we're learning hard. Now here's something that's legit crazy with DaVinci. When I wanna select a bunch of clips and bring them on in, I can bring them into the timeline in Premiere Pro and drop them there. They're all in order. That's nice. Like logically. Yeah, that's how you want it. In DaVinci, look what happens. If I wanna bring these in DaVinci, say I put them in there, they're all in this random ass order. 23, 25, 29. Who cares? Come on. 
You'll figure it out later. What the hell is your problem? Why? Why is it in random order? And you can't... Please, DaVinci, give me the setting that just has it default in order the way I shot it. I'm not a movie that shot Leonardo DiCaprio on Friday and then freaking Pacino on Wednesday, you know what I mean? To add insult to injury on that one, if I'm in Premiere Pro and say I don't want to drag them into the timeline, I want to put them into the project files, and I'm in effects, I can just hover over this, it switches to project, and then I can drop them in here. In DaVinci, if I'm in the effects library, I bring these over. Okay, I just want to hover over to the media pool. Um, oh, someone help. Where am I supposed to drop these? Where am I gonna drop? I'll drop your baby. I can't do anything. Maybe if I fast click it. No, it's over. It's over. But you can drop these into the media pool if it's selected, but it's an extra click. And that's what I'm finding, extra clicks everywhere. Just simplify my life. Now this one hopefully is user error on my part, but say the Canon Cripplehammer wanted to pay me a visit. Oh, you're a giant. Oh, you grew so much. He's leveling up, beating my ass. It's a pain in the bitch. If I want to have a little appearance here from a friend, I can make it smooth. <laughs> He's tiny. He's so tiny. I can just ease this in and look how smooth it is when he arrives. See how he just like he comes and he's he eases into it. In Da Vinci, if Canon Cripply Hammer over here wants to first, I can't just select him. I gotta press this button first. And look how much faster he moves. Where's the the accuracy, the pinpoint? It's like, oh, do you want him here or right there? Oh my god. What is this? So let's say, okay, we want to position over here, make a little keyframe. Hey, how you doing? See that little pause? It paused when I started playback. Okay, so we get there. Let's zoom in on a little. I gotta sh show all these keyframe bullshit things. Okay, here it is. Let's ease that in. So it eased it, right? No, it didn't. Didn't ease a damn thing. It's just this jarring stop. Uh, clunky hammer. Clunky ass hammer. And you can't like, okay, I'll, I'll fine adjust it. I'll adjust it better. And then he starts waving around. He's dipping and shit. This ain't hip hop. And where is he now? Why isn't he coming in? What just happened? I think I moved the whole thing so far out. It's just so jarring, so if somebody can tell me how to ease in. Now this one is super annoying. I don't get, if this is a setting that I can turn off, please help. Let me show the scopes. So if I'm adjusting shadows or something, you can see I'm lifting them here. Once they're at the bottom, they're dead. See how that, boom, it just jumped like 50, 100. I didn't do anything. I'm not trying to fool you guys. And then I got to bring it back up and then it snaps to the top. It's like, you gotta be very careful here. It just, something happens where it just, I can't always replicate it, but it just jumps at times. Right now it's perfect. <laughs> I don't know what happens. Another thing that's super annoying in DaVinci is the way the undo button, it doesn't undo the way you'd think it would. In Premiere Pro, say I drop a LUT on here, my GoPro native LUT. Oh, we look so beautiful now. If I make some setting changes, say I want to fine tune the temperature and I start sliding around, it's like, oh no, that's way too far. No, that's way too, okay, let me, uh, uh, yeah, oh no, there it is. I can undo back to where I first clicked. Boom, we're back in DaVinci. Let's say I want to play around with the shadows. Oh, that's way too much. Oh no, let's get it back to dark there. No, that's good. No. I actually like this. I love that. That's perfect. If I undo, it does it like halfway and then another and then another. Where did it stop? Like I held the button, made tweaks, and it'll save at like points, random ass points. I don't get that. Now don't even get me started on this cut page. It's the dumbest thing anybody's ever implemented in a program. It, there's nothing fast about it. You want speed? This slows me down. Everybody I know works off the audio format. 
so we know when the words begin we can see even right there see i can't snap it's just so unintuitive let's say it's right there i can barely see that it's a tiny thing and i don't know how to increase it i don't know how to increase that audio waveform i can't seem to do it but that's hands down the worst way to edit that's not faster in this style because i don't know about you but i drop everything onto the timeline and edit from there if you're doing some movie and you need to bring in b-roll maybe that's a better way you select your clip up here and it's like okay i want this part and make an in and out point and it's like okay that's perfect append it append us in nobody i know edits like this with this one up here no way no way would you ever do that and keep dropping them in like that's bullshit just it's so fast on premiere pro i'm just going i'm sliding i'm deleting i'm going back and boom damn how's he editing so fast oh my god he uploads seven videos a week how does he do it this is how because it's so fast why didn't that work oh i pressed the wrong button you know what i mean one thing DaVinci does better, at least it scales it right. What the hell was that, Premiere? I always gotta adjust it if the timeline's a different resolution. DaVinci has like a snap to fullness guide that works. Thank you, DaVinci. Last thing I wanna complain about, in Premiere Pro, if you mess up your timeline, your frame rate, if you filmed in 30p and your timeline's 24p, you just switch it. Sequence, sequence settings, okay. Oh god, that's the wrong one. No, it was 24p, sorry about that. And then you click OK, you're good to go, and it changes. Sometimes the audio gets super jacked, and then you have to move it to another level, and that fixes it. But that's the only issue I've ever had. In DaVinci, and why is this so annoyingly big? I gotta zoom in just to shrink that back down again. Give me a break, DaVinci. In DaVinci, the only way to fix this is to copy everything and then go up here create a new timeline and then you can change the settings okay we'll do 24p this time sorry about that create so now you got a new timeline you paste your stuff back but then anything else you had saved is done for all my audio settings that we did before gone my compression the dynamics it's all gone it's all gone where is it it's all off and they're all back to like the default settings too. So even if I click them on, I got to like, oh, what was that setting? The threshold, I don't remember what I'm doing here. <laughs> so I don't know how many of these complaints will be fixed in the studio version when it arrives, once you pay for it. Cause there's a bunch of limitations on this. Whenever I try to do something, it's like, oh, you've reached the limit, buddy. It's like, you can't edit 10 bit files. There's a bunch of things you just cannot do. Basic things, denoise your footage. Not that I ever do that. But on the GoPro, I wanted to do one of these, the lens corrections. I was like, oh, what's that all about? Oh, come on. The distortion, it's like, oh, you can't do that. Sorry, let me do it. Not yet, I'll do it, I promise, I'll buy it. You could make the GoPro a little more, less flat. It's like, oh, that would be cool, okay. The biggest thing is I think the performance just isn't as good in the free version, and that's the biggest fault because you're using the free version to decide if you want to buy the studio version and it's all slow and laggy. Like, I'm convinced that this is not good. If, it, if this is what it is, I would not buy it. But I bought it hoping that the performance increase happens. And if it doesn't, then whatever, I learned my lesson the hard way. But at least we all learn together. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you have any tips for DaVinci, post them and I will delete your comment. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, we're done. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.